Hey, what's going on team? It's Josh from the Field Grade Leader. So today's a pretty good day. It is the Tuesday after Labor Day. Uh, so for my headquarters, that was supposed to be a four day weekend. Uh, but for the higher headquarters, uh, it was not a four day weekend. So I ended up having to go in for the morning, you know, can look at that, uh, positively, negatively for me, still got a half day, still got a little bit of time at home to think. So made myself a, a nice cold brew. Yes, it has vanilla sweet cream, uh, there on the top and no, I am not ashamed of that. So, uh, so just wanted to take some time, uh, to work through an inflection point that I think is pretty important, so I wanted to share that with you guys. So inflection points, right? There are natural inflection points in all of our careers where we kind of rise above the fray, we come out of those day-to-day -day tasks, and we think about where we are and where we're going, you know, our dreams and our aspirations. So for me, this is a natural inflection point in my career. I've been selected for promotion to Lieutenant Colonel, which is an awesome feeling. However, the command select list is not yet published. Uh, the board results are not finalized. And you know, I know that the Army doesn't owe me anything. I know plenty of guys who thought that they were in good shape going into the board uh, who were not selected for command because it is an exceptionally selective board and the folks that are selected for battalion command represent the absolute best. But while I'm at this natural inflection point, it's an opportunity for me to think of some of those overarching continuities in leadership that I've learned over the years. You know, I've been a, a field grade officer, a major now for seven years. That's almost half of my career. And I've learned a ton of lessons about how to run an operational planning team or how to manage my calendar or make awesome PowerPoint slides. But those things, those, those, those TTPs are not what I'm here to talk about today. Again, I wanna focus on those continuities that tie back to overarching leadership with hopes that whatever happens next, be it command or continuing into another staff position, that I can carry these thoughts forward. First is a simple reminder that this business, the profession of arms, it's about people. Whatever defines mission success, be it a successful breach of the National Training Center or getting a briefing past the chief of staff, the actions required to be successful are accomplished by human beings. And as organizational leaders, more often than not, those human beings, those people who accomplish mission are no longer us. Right? We clearly do work, we, we clearly uh, contribute to success, but the first person in the breach or the person with their hands on the keyboard producing that grint sum or whatever it may be, well, that's not you, typically. We are the people who enable individuals to be successful. Good leaders focus on and care for those individuals. Now, when I talk about care, I'm not talking about coddling people, right? I'm talking about giving people the right education, the right training, and the right experiences to make a good decision when it matters. And often it's about letting people fail in training so that they can truly learn from their mistakes. As field grade leaders, we are now responsible for training the next generation that will precede us in these positions. One day, the sun will set on all of our careers and what truly matters is the legacy you establish through training and leading others. So next up is a recognition that your character is what defines you. Do you remember showing up as a lieutenant or a captain to a unit? I do. And at that point, what defined me was my tactical prowess. Could I fight? Could I lead my soldiers? Because we were going. We were going to Iraq. We were going to Afghanistan. And that's what matters at the tactical level is accomplishing mission and keeping your people safe. Going forward into our field grade years, that tactical prowess is still important, but that becomes implied. There's an assumption when you show up to a new organization that you can fight. Now you have to prove that still, it's still important, it's still ingrained in our business, but it's no longer what defines you. What defines you now? Well, that's your character. 
and your character is what precedes you before you go into a new organization. Now, character is not what you put in a leadership survey. It isn't what you write into your command philosophy. It isn't what you say about yourself in your AIM 2.0. Character is a summation of every interaction with every individual each and every day. It's what you do in those split second decisions and when the pressure's on that truly matters. It's those hard choices when it seems no one is watching. Further, character contributes to the climate of your organization and it shapes the impression of other leaders, either positive or negative, and becomes a part of their leadership attributes as well. Finally, know that no one will define balance for you. People expect you to get results while taking care of your family, while taking care of yourself. It's different than those days as a company level leader where you were given tasks, you could accomplish those tasks, and you could see a clear end state. Here, as an organizational leader, there are no clear priorities and the tasks keep coming. We don't possess the bandwidth to accomplish these tasks. We must give priorities and assume risk in other places. We've seen other leaders burn out over the years, too focused on mission accomplishment and not thinking holistically about their lives. Those senior leaders who are truly successful are able to separate urgent from important and manage their time and energy effectively, all while taking care of themselves and their families. We look to these leaders with aspiration, but often forget that other leaders, the junior ones, are looking to us to set the same example. So I just wanted to share with you some thoughts from this inflection point in my career and hope that it spurs some thought for you, perhaps as you go through uh, the weekend or into the next week. But just think through where are you in your career and where are you going? What are the things that you've learned in your current assignment, good or bad, and what things do you want to take forward in your career? You know, I've learned many lessons about leadership as a field grade officer. There've been many challenging times, late nights, early mornings, hunched over a keyboard somewhere, usually in the basement of a headquarters with no windows, but it hasn't all been pain and suffering. There are enduring continuities in leadership that I hope to take forward wherever this journey takes me in the profession of arms. Thanks and have a good one.